All right, everybody, welcome to the Wealthy Contractor Podcast. This is Brian Kaskavalsian with G4 Marketing Group. And in today's episode, I am going to talk to my very good friend, Josh Nelson, who is uh, the founder and president of Plumbing and HVAC SEO. And he is also the author of a book called How to Triple Your Sales by Getting Your Internet Marketing Right. And what we're going to talk about today is, yeah, we're going to talk about internet marketing and what are, you know, two or three things that you need to know for 2018 in order to be successful online. But I also want to, to pick Josh's brain a little bit about what are some of the things that make contractors successful from his experience? You know, like me, Josh has worked with hundreds of contractors just like you. And um, Josh and I are always looking for those clues. You know, we we talk all the time about, you know, success leaves clues. And uh, so I want to talk with Josh a little bit about that today as well. And um, and then uh, towards the end, we uh, will let you know, or Josh will let you know, how to get a free copy of his book, How to Triple Your Sales by Getting Your Internet Marketing Right. So, Josh, welcome to the Wealthy Contractor Podcast. I'm excited to hey. have you here. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. I know, like, like you mentioned, we're, we're friends, but I'm also a big fan of the, the podcast. I listen to the episode. So, uh, honored to be here and excited to, to share. Cool. Thank you. So, um, you know, let's get into, let's start with the area that you have um more expertise in than than anybody I know, and that is how to be successful online, specifically when it comes to plumbing and HVAC businesses. But obviously, what you know, what advice you're going to give will really works for anybody. But let's talk about what are the top two or three things that people need to know right now, you know, this year about internet marketing so that they can be more successful. Absolutely. And I, I'd love to talk about that. And I'll definitely talk about the top two this year. But probably the biggest thing I find with contractors as it relates to internet marketing is they tend to get the the, the, the mix out of, out of sync. So what I find most contractors, they dive into internet marketing um, with paid search. So they get pay-per-click, they've got pay-per-lead services. But in a lot of cases, they don't have a good foundation, right? Their overall internet marketing strategy um, isn't, isn't, comprehensive enough. So they've got all of this money in paid search, but they don't have a good website that's built to convert with good messaging. They don't have uh, you know, a solid online reputation. And what happens is your customers, when they're looking for your services, they're going to wind up on your website, whether they found you through paid search, whether they found you through direct mail, whether they found you through any other channel. And so I think one of the main things is make sure you've got a good foundation and you know, kind of build up to, to leveraging paid search and the other online marketing channels. That would that would kind of be the the main thing that I find every day talking with with contractors, home service uh, companies. Well, let's think, hold on, hold on one second with that. So when you talk about a good overall strategy, you know, people jumping into paid search, you know, pay per click on Google, I would imagine is what you're what you're really referring to there. Um, do you want to elaborate a little bit more on on what you mean by that? Because I know that you could you could spend a lot of money on pay per click. You could blow a lot of money on pay per click by not getting this right. Mm. So can you can you go a little bit deeper on on what you mean by the overall strategy? Yeah. So oftentimes, you know, the, the home service contractor will get approached by a by an aggressive pay per click management company or by somebody that wants to sell them you know, leads. And like you said, it's easy to jump into pay-per-click, pick a bunch of keywords, spend $20, $50 per click. But if you don't have a good strategy, right? If you don't have good landing pages, if you don't have good copy on your text ads, um, your cost per lead is gonna be exorbitant. But more important than that, if you look at the big picture, there's, there's lots of things you can do to market your, your home service company online. Um, the, the lowest cost and highest relevance is going to be the organic stuff, right? Having a good website that shows up on Google and Yahoo and Bing when someone is searching for you, statistics still tell us 70 plus percent of consumers click on the non-paid listings. So, you know, making sure that your strategy covers organic, 
that there's a website that's built to convert in addition to some of the pay-per-click and pay-per-lead type stuff. Um, that's how you can get an affordable cost per lead, which generates return on investment and scalability as opposed to just going down one path, which is either pay-per-click or pay-per-lead. Great. Okay. How important, when, you know, when it comes to pay-per-click, um, I know you guys do a lot of pay-per-click. How important are reviews when it comes to pay-per-click? So, I mean, reviews are, are, are very important. When it comes specifically to pay-per-click, you know, there's not a there's not a direct correlation to the number of reviews you have and your cost per, per click, right? Google has what they call their, their quality score algorithm. They need to serve relevant results. So, you know, to, to really optimize a pay-per-click campaign, you want to make sure you've got really well thought out ad groups, which are just combinations of keywords based on what your customer is looking for that go to really intelligent text ads that speak to that group, as well as landing pages that are congruent with what they were looking for. And we find that when you get those three elements lined up, you can have a higher quality score, pay less per click, and still maintain top placement. Now, with that said, online reviews will impact your conversion rate. So when somebody gets to the page for their pay-per-click, a lot of times they're gonna read, they're gonna research, but they wanna know, you know, is this a quality company? Are they gonna show up on time? And the best way to help with conversion is to show reviews and what other people are saying about you so that's where it's going to have the biggest impact it won't necessarily impact your uh, cost per click per se yeah well it but but it'll impact your cost per appointment absolutely exactly i had i had a client josh that um they they were big they're big pay-per-click users and um they they weren't doing well with reviews, so they installed our authentic feedback platform, and they started to drive more reviews. Their pay per click results went up by sixty percent, and the only thing that changed was they had better reviews. Hmm. That, yeah, that's it's it's powerful. Yeah, so it won't impact your cost per click, but it will impact your conversion rate. Yeah. So you know when you get that conversion rate up. Like you said, you can drive more more leads through pay per click. Yeah, and it, it drives the overall marketing cost down. The click might be the same, but you know if it takes if it takes you know if it's a ten dollar keyword just to keep the math easy, and it takes five clicks to um, to get a lead, that's fifty bucks. But man, what if you can do it with four leads or four clicks to one lead? Exactly. You know, drove your lead cost from 50 to 10, 40. Yeah, and on that, on that same note, so what, what things improve conversion? Reviews improve conversion. The other thing we've really found that improve conversion as it relates to both pay-per-click and organic traffic is authenticity. So when somebody gets to the site or to the landing page and it's just a stock photo with very generic content, that converts poorly. But if to the extent you can have pictures of the owner, pictures of the team, pictures of the true people that are going to show up to the home, uh, or even better, multimedia, like a video of the owner talking about the service and why somebody should choose them versus the competition. We find that that can have a massive impact on, on conversion rates. So if you bundle online reviews, like good online reviews with authentic imagery and multimedia, uh, you can see a massive increase in your conversion rate, which makes everything work better. Yeah. You know, I've had so many situations where, you know, our, you know, our stuff is very personalized and um, we've had situations where we really have to, for lack of a better way of saying it, talk, talk the owner into being more authentic, using images of themselves, of their, mm -hmm. of their, why is it so hard? Do you have that same issue? We do. Oftentimes we've got to convince the client, look, this is in your best interest. You want to show your picture. Yeah. You want to show your team. Um, I, I don't know if they, they just feel, some of them feel like it's an ego. Like I don't want to be the guy on the cover. I don't want to be egotistical. Um, and then other times it's just, they don't, they don't want to put themselves out there. Um, I will tell you though, the, the statistics, the conversion rate, the split test will all tell you that you're going to make more money 
when you're when you're real and when you're authentic with your website and your landing pages. Yeah, I I'm one of those I'm one of those people that tried to avoid early in my career. I wanted to avoid that as much as possible. You know, I wanted it. I didn't want it to be about me and and I didn't want to use my picture and I didn't want to. But you know what? I found I found this out exactly that the more authentic I was, the more I used myself. Um, the more money we made. And so, you know, I've been doing it reluctantly, begrudgingly. Um, I, I don't like it, um, but I do it because I know that we'll be more successful doing it versus not doing it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, no doubt. So that that I think is a biggie, and I think that's really good advice. What what else? What are what are a couple other things that that the listener needs to know? Yeah. So going back to the initial question, Richard, what are the things you need to be aware of? 2018. What are the big changes? So the first one, probably the most important, I want to make sure everybody that's listening is aware of, is called lo- Google Local Ads uh, or Google Local Services. It used to be called. Google Home Service ads, and they keep changing the name of it. But ultimately, in in our space, plumbing and HVAC, they've rolled this out in almost all of the major markets. And what is it is, it's a a pay-per-lead engine that's showing up above the pay-per-click listings in organic search. So if you were to go right now and type in, um, let's just say, San Diego plumber, the first thing that comes up are these Google guaranteed, Google local ads listings. And you know the clients that we have that are in, using this in their market um, are getting really good, high quality leads at a low cost per lead in their market. Uh, Google's been rapidly expanding this across the country, and I believe it's going to roll out to to more than just plumbing, HVAC, and locksmiths. I truly believe they're going to be rolling this out to almost all home service industry. So it's something to be paying really close attention to. If you're in plumbing or HVAC, it's now, right? It's it's you have to be paying attention to this. You have to be active on it. Um, if if you know if you're not in one of those industries, just be aware uh, and you want to be on the front end of it because there is a process to get into it. They they run background checks on all of your all of your team members. Um, there there's things you have to do to get into this program. So be aware of it. That's the first thing. The second thing is really this shift towards mobile. For home service consumers, and it used to be they looked for you guys in the yellow pages. Then it was they were looking at for you on their computer from their desktop. Uh, and now today, as it sits, the lion's share of your customers, when they look for whatever it is that you do, uh, they're doing it from their mobile phone. So you want to make sure that your mobile that your website is mobile optimized, that it loads extremely quickly. Um, you know, if you don't have that set up, you could miss out on a lot of really good quality leads and traffic. So if I were to point to two major things in 2018, it would be those two, the Google local service ads and uh, really making sure that you've thought through your mobile strategy. Great. So let's let's then shift topics a little bit and talk about um Let's talk about success and 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 uh, what makes, from your experience, what you've seen, um, what makes contractors successful nowadays. I love that. I love that question, and it's I, I run a podcast of my own where I interview some of the most successful plumbing and HVAC companies across the country, and like you said, success leaves clues. So, what is it that the that the best of the best are doing? And, and to me, most of the time, they've spent some time to set up their brand, right? So they've got a solid company name, they've got a good logo, they've got a color scheme, and they've got consistency with how they portray themselves in the marketplace. Just about everybody I've seen that's doing really well has thought through and fleshed out a, a solid brand. Uh, beyond that, almost all of them have a diverse marketing strategy, right? You have to generate leads in order to grow the company, um, but you can't rely on one exclusive channel. So most of them have strategies that include online and offline, and they're leveraging just about all of the tools in their bag, right? SEO, pay-per-click, social media, email marketing. They're also doing direct mail. They're also doing email marketing follow-up. 
they're active on social media. So I would say, you know, if there's one one or two things that I've really noticed that the best of the best are doing is they've got a solid brand and they've got a comprehensive marketing strategy that that is is more than just a, a single dimensional play. Yeah, diversity in 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 marketing is what's going to give your business more stability. Um, mm -hmm. Can't rely on any one area to um, deliver leads because that air that that one lead source can be taken away, as has exactly. happened in the past. Um, and, and, it's, and it seems that a lot of the offline advertising combined with online advertising results in, in better results from both. So, you know, when you're doing radio, TV, billboards, your brand becomes more known, it becomes more recognized, you become more of a household name, and it drives more people to, to run that search from their mobile phone or from their desktop and pick your company versus the competition. So there really is a synergistic um, value to having a comprehensive multi-channel marketing approach. Right. Um, what is, by the way, for, for anybody that's listening, that's in the plumbing and HVAC business, you got to listen to Josh's podcast. Um, what, what's the name of the podcast, Josh, let them know so that they can find it on iTunes. Yep. Yeah, it's the plumbing and HVAC marketing podcast. Um, you can find it at plumbingmarketing.net or on iTunes and it, it's singular in purpose. It's just interviews with million dollar plus plumbing and HVAC companies on what they do in order to keep their phones ringing and their trucks running. Like what are they doing from a marketing perspective? Yeah. Now let's go beyond marketing. So, um, you know, marketing is one aspect of the business. What are some of the other things that you see that these guys have in common when it comes to growing their growing their businesses? Yeah, I mean, obviously they they've moved from being the the technician, the guy you know doing the work, to to being the business leader, right? In in almost every case, they've focused on working on the business as opposed to working in the business, which frees them to think about the the marketing strategy, frees them to think about the company culture and really the experience that they provide to their to their clients and to their customers. So I would say, you know, in, in the plumbing and HVAC field, one of the biggest challenges after you get the phone to ring is finding good quality techs. So a lot of them have very progressive recruitment strategies where they're they're placing apprentices on an ongoing basis. They're active in their community showing themselves as the brand, as the, the leader in their space, so the technicians want to come work with them. So, I mean, beyond just their marketing strategy, a lot of it is, is around the culture that they develop as a company and the, the ability to attract high-quality team members. Yeah, and, and what's interesting about what you said is, you know, in the plumbing and HVAC field, it's, 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 it's literally it's getting out of the truck. It's how do you get yourself out of the truck? You know, when I was in when I was in home services way back way back in the day um, with the carpet cleaning business, that was you know my my thing was I'm going to work in the truck for one year, and I'm going to learn this business, and then that's it. I'm out. I'm I'm gonna I'm going to replace myself as the technician, and I'm going to move myself into the role of a business owner and you know josh a lot of a lot of the the people that listen to this podcast are in the the window business the roofing business siding one day bath and their big thing is that they're getting out of the truck equivalent mm. is is to stop running leads mm. because generally they're like the number one salesperson for their business and they have a really hard time letting that part of the business go. And it's, it's almost, it's, they're, they're equal. It's what, what you spend the most time on in your business is pro if it's not a leveraged activity is probably the thing that needs to be get, you know, to be delegated off or, or, uh, find other people to do, to do the work. Um, you mentioned about finding, um, techs, um, I know that that's a big issue, not just in the plumbing business, but also just all around 
in the home improvement business. Is there anything unique or interesting that you've seen people doing um, that you can share? Yeah, I mean, so the obvious stuff, right? Placing the, the ads on the job boards, um, Craigslist, Indeed, ZipRecruiter, uh, that, that's one play. And it, it just seems like the best technicians in our field and probably in, in any home service uh, aren't out looking for a job, right? They're in a truck, they're working for another company, they're active. And it seems like the, the companies that do best in recruiting the top talent are, are leveraging multimedia. They're creating their brand. And, and in some cases, actually running TV ads that say, hey, look, we're looking for high quality technicians. And because the technicians are already in the truck, they're hearing the radio ads, they're seeing the TV ads, and they're getting drawn to, to, these, to these companies, to these leaders. And so that's kind of a unique play is that if you're already doing some multimedia advertising, think about um, you know, doing some employment advertisement or kind of combining your ad with something along the lines and we're always looking for quality technicians. And you'd be surprised you're able to attract some of the cream to the crop that isn't just uh, sitting on job boards looking, looking for a new, uh, new place to work. Yeah, what's interesting is, you know, uh, I, I don't remember, it was two weeks ago or a month ago or two months ago, I don't remember, I was at a big um, industry event and um, there was this uh, company out of Southern California, really smart, smart guys. And their business has grown um, tremendously over the last five years. And he said something really good. And I can't say it the same way he said it, but I'll, I'll, I'll paraphrase. And basically what he said is, you've got to look at recruiting people to work for you the same way you look to recruit customers. So mm. you, the effort that you put into marketing to get customers, put that effort into marketing for people to come and work for your to work for your company. And um, I thought that was really, you know, again, he said it a lot better than I just said it. But basically, that's a whole nother um, uh, way of marketing in your in your business. Absolutely. Yeah. Powerful. Power. If you if you just think about it like that, imagine how many more quality members you can attract to your team. Yeah. I mean, would you agree that one of the things that is uh, what really sets the most successful people apart is their ability to essentially systemize the processes and then hire people to run those systems and processes. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, no, no doubt. Yeah. Their number one job is how, do, you know, who do I get? Who do I get to do this, to do this job? And I, I, to me, it's always, what are you doing this week to fire yourself from the things that you shouldn't be doing? You know, every week, every month, every quarter, what are the things that you're doing right now in your business that you as the owner should not be doing, that you could put a system or a process in place and then hire somebody to run that process so that you could focus on the higher level activities of the business? Absolutely. Yeah, no, no doubt. And to, to the extent that you're bottleneck doing what it is that you do every day, um, you can't be growing. You can't be becoming a, a wealthy contractor, as Brian's teaching you to do. So I think that that is a it's a critical skill and a critical uh, paradigm. The way that you look at your business, the way you look at your day to day activities, that separates the you know the guy in the truck versus the the true business entrepreneur. Yeah. Yeah, because if you're if you're doing the work, if you're out there doing the work. Um, you don't really have a business, you have a job. Yeah. And so what do you have to do to not have a job, have a business and have something that's working for you? And that is, you know, you've got to uncover all the different leverage points in the business and, and put in processes and systems to take, you know, to put people in place to get those jobs done. So you're not stuck doing them yourself. 
Absolutely. Yeah, and and there are tools and resources for that. I mean, you know, there's there's people out there that'll help you do some of this, and then obviously there's people like Josh and like me that are strategic partners that can take on a part of the business that you're not really good at. I mean, for somebody to to get the experience that a Josh has, um, I mean, you're talking about years and years and years of of study and testing and working and spending money and do why would you go through all that when you could just get a guy like Josh to be on your team as your strategic partner and um, let him do what he does best and you go do what you do best, which is hopefully, you know, growing your, your company. Mm. So um, one of the other things that I wanted to ask you about is because I know that you, um, you, you always, you always got these cool tools and productivity tools and things that, that you're using um, in your business. And you've introduced me to, to quite a few. Um, are there any right now that you just really love and, and would recommend? I mean, there's all kinds of cool you know, trinkets out there. The one that productivity tool that I use pretty much every day is, is Evernote, which isn't necessarily what you'd call a, a time management or productivity tool. But what I love about it is that it it's, sits on, on the cloud so I can access my notes. I can access my notebooks from my iPhone. I can access it from my computer. I can access it from somebody else's computer. So I never have to worry about anything I type getting lost. And it's it's very searchable. It's very notebook based. So I can start the end of the, at the beginning of the day and say, okay, what are the key things I have to get done? I can checklist that out. I can you know come up with an action plan for a marketing strategy. Come up with a strategy for a client. Have all of that separated into different notes into different tabs, uh, and really have it archived and accessible uh, into perpetuity. And I found that to be a tremendous uh, productivity tool that I use you know very very frequently. Evernote. Anything else? From a productivity perspective, that's that's my favorite. Uh, from a marketing automation perspective, uh, Infusionsoft is a tool that that we use that does all kinds of amazing things from a you know email communication, customer follow up perspective. Uh, really couldn't uh, couldn't live my life without either of those two tools. Cool. All right, Josh. So. Um, Oh, hey, let's tell everybody how they can get um, how they can get a copy of your book, how to triple your sales by getting your internet marketing right. Absolutely. That, that'd be awesome. So if you want to get a free copy, all you have to do is go to plumberseo.net slash book. That's plumberseo.net slash book. And um, there you'll, you know, you'll be able to enter your details and we'll, we'll get a copy of the book out to you um, right away. Yeah, this thing's great too. I mean, I, ha I actually have it in my hand because um, I wanted to make sure I've seen the book a thousand times. Um, I it, it, but it's a long title, so I wanted to make sure I got it, I got it right. But I'm flipping through it and remembering the first time I read it, I must have gone through this this book in in just like two or three hours. Um, it's so it's so like it's not in geek speak. Um, Josh, Josh does a really good job of taking like these complex strategies because it's all the online marketing thing. This internet marketing thing can be really so complicated and so complex. And, um, Josh has always done a really good job of taking this stuff, this complicated stuff and breaking it down and making it simple, um, and that's, you know, that's with me. I've known him for seven years and, you know, we've, we've, we've been good friends for the last, you know, four or five of those. So I, you know, I, I, I get a lot from Josh, um, but even in the book um, and, and in his podcast and in his webinars and things, he really does a good job of, of, of dumbing this down for those of us who are not, you know, uh, super geeks. Um, and it's not loaded with all kinds of, um, um, com you know, complicated formulas and stuff. It's just kind of step by step. Here's how you do it. And um, I recommend everybody get um, a copy of the book. I learned a lot from it. Um, well, Josh, 
Um, thank you for uh, for joining me on the the podcast. Any any final words? No, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. And you know, the last thing I'd say is just be a continuous learner, right? I mean, sitting on podcasts like this, reading books, being part of groups and organizations. Um, you know, that's that's one thing that almost all successful entrepreneurs have in common. They're constantly seeking to learn. They're constantly looking to get around other highly successful people. So, you know, kudos to you for listening to this podcast today. You know, continue to learn, continue to invest in yourself, and you'll go far. Cool. Thank you. All right, everybody. Um, until next time, this is Brian Kaskavalsian with G4 Marketing Group, and this is the Wealthy Contractor Podcast.